a little unique situation. Uh, we went, uh, we had posted, let me do it this way, we had posted our agenda that we had two different conversations to be had while we were in executive. Those conversations were both, uh, one was personnel and two was contract negotiations. As most of you know that are here and anybody watching online, live or later, typically matters of personnel are always discussed in executive session. There's a procedure that has to be followed by the government. We are advised by uh, our manager and our attorney how to do that. Uh, anytime personnel is, is happening in executive session, those employees have a right to know they're being discussed. And two, they have the option to whether or not that conversation happens in executive session or it happens in during the public meeting. So this is new territory for me and new territory, I think, for everybody up here. But we're basically taking a discussion that was going to be done in executive session, which was personnel. And those employees have asked us to have that conversation in public. It's a little odd because we're going to have this conversation with members of the public here and with a camera going and with people watching on TV. But you have to understand this is a conversation in and between us and our uh, administration, our, our professionals. So bear with us because before we go into the next portion of the agenda, which is discussions, we still have a matter of personnel to deal with and it will be discussed here in public. So without further ado, I'm going to now hand it over to the manager. And again, this is uncharted territory for us all, so just bear with us. I'm going to hand it over to the town manager. Sure. So uh, members of the council, um, Mark and I were uh, asked to review the developer's escrow account, uh, which is kept down in the finance department and processed by the finance department. Upon the initial review of the reviewing of the escrow account, we saw that um, there was a conflict of three employees receiving compensation based on being reimbursed for attending meetings, uh, which uh, there is no um, there's no public authorization via ordinance or resolution to reimburse. Um, so we went back, uh, and again, the review is not completed yet, but we started going back. I think we're back maybe two years at this point doing um, totals as far as how many checks were issued out of the escrow account that may have been and could continue to be in conflict with a uh, ordinance and a resolution. There is a resolution that this governing body passed on uh, August of 2019. That resolution specifically identifies uh, whether it's, it's the construction official zoning officer and acting in the capacity of planning director, uh, a, a stipend that this, this governing body passed and uh, issued a, a stipend, I'm just gonna round off numbers, say $670 a month. $17,000 a year. So that, that is by resolution that those monies are to be paid to the construction official. Um, besides that, there have been re, uh, it checks issued for attending meetings. So that resolution of 2000, can I just, August of 2000. Can I just jump in for one second? This is a, just so members of the council know, this is a conversation. So you had mentioned reimbursement. Uh, I've seen probably what you've seen. I, I'm not. I'm not sure what's being reimbursed. It, I, I thought it was being billed for services rendered. In, not, invoices, not, invo invoices submitted. That uh, invoices submitted for meetings attended. If that's I use the word reimbursed. Definitely not reimbursed. reimbursement. Okay. Um, I stand reimbursement. You lay money out. You get paid back. Okay. So I stand to be corrected. So invoices were submitted to the finance department, uh, which those invoices were paid out of the escrow account, which there is no. Um, tool. There's no resolution, there's no ordinance to pay uh, a secretary to attend a work meeting or the construction official to attend uh, special meetings or work meetings. Just a quick question. Are these regular meetings or special meetings? So the resolution specific, the res of August of 2019 specifically identifies all meetings, okay? Right. So the compensation, the additional compensation to the construction official is based on the resolution to attend all meetings. But the sort of sum up, the resolution says specifically special, let's just say special planning board meetings, subcommittee meetings. The resolution says 
you're being compensated 17,000 plus for those meetings, Correct. yet you're telling me invoices have been typed up and money has been withdrawn for the same exact meetings. Invoices have been submitted to the finance department. Checks, checks have been issued out of the for the escrow same account. exact the meeting for the That's same correct. exact meeting that we already know is being paid through uh, an extra stipend. That's it. it. Sounds serious to me. Again, how, how um, serious do you think it is? I don't know because we're Mark and I are still reviewing the whole. So I, again, part part of our later conversation is to correct some of the procedures that aren't being followed. Agreed. And I think when we get to that portion of the meeting and realize that um, via past practice or whatever the result may be, we need to, uh, and when I say we, we have to include the planning board and the zoning board, we need to make some, some corrections, obviously. So, so based on past practice, we've been doing this for a while. I, I don't know how far back, but we're back probably, I know for sure, two years, maybe three, four, five. That's what we're going to find. Yeah. That's what the review is going to show us. No, I, I kind of remember that myself over time, that that's what we kind of did. But So the practice that I'd like to see is that we pay somebody for a service, and they don't go and take additional money for the same service. I mean, that's, I think, the practice that I'd like to see. I mean, I don't. I think we, I I think we care all. much about past practice if it was wrong. No, no, I, like, but, but we approve, you can't go back and say, hey, we did this, we approved this, and it was okay. The auditors saw it, they were okay with it, our CFO was okay with it. Well, I don't think we approved invoices. <clears throat> well, our, CF, our CFO did. Theoretically, that was the person in charge, and our auditors did look at that. So if we, need to, if we need to clarify from this point on, that's a whole other trip. That, well, you that, know. That's a question. That's, that's a question to me. That's a question. Does the money come out of... Uh, comes out of escrow. So the, is the escrow signed off by the CFO or is it signed off by who? Anthony's name is on the check. CFO's name is checked on yeah, the Yeah, so just so that we clearly paint the, the correct picture of what took place because certainly I don't want anyone to, to point a finger at, at, at uh, Kim. The procedure that's in place or was in place up until this initial review was that professionals, secretaries, construction officials would take an invoice and submit it to the finance department who matched it up to the meeting or to the development and those checks were issued with a stamp. Now this practice has been going on before we had uh, Judith. Joe was in charge of the, the escrow account so then if I'm, and again, the review is not totally complete because I haven't even spoken to Judith, but I'm going to tell you, Joe was doing it, right? Joe was, we never, we didn't have a CFO, we didn't have a full-time CFO. So at one point, Joe was in charge, then... Yeah, but you don't know how long this goes back. I do not. So being that Joe was here or not here, wouldn't matter if it only started, say, in the last two years or so, or year or so. If the review says that it only started in the last two years, absolutely. I, I, I as you know, I filed an open request. Uh, but review is pretty easy. I mean, you, you just look. It's, I had sent you an email three weeks ago. I, I, what, what is the review process? What, I mean, it's very easy for me. I, I, I filed an open request and I could see. So what, what more time or what's the next step? I, I, don't, I don't want to put a time limit on it, but I think when we get to the next topic, which we're keeping the topic separate and I have no problem keeping the topic separate, but I think when we get to the next topic, it's going to be quite clear that bills are being paid without proper authorization. And, and again, or, or, go ahead without proper authorization implies like the bills are okay to be paid there's just no authorization no i, didn't I say think that. we're talking about something a little different that no, i didn't say inappropriately that. being invoiced and inappropriately being paid it's a, it's a big difference okay yeah mayor if i may um i had a question in regards to that it it, it kind of aligns with what he's saying i mean i'm a small business owner and i think of it as if i'm paying someone their salary and they're also billing. That's what I'm understanding, right? Yes. They're billing for the same services that they've already rendered. Um, now, we're, is there anywhere in in the ordinance where it mentions a limit of of meetings where people may have been under the impression that they had a limit, and after that they can bill after that? No. So the uh, and I refer to it as the ordinance that this council passed in August of 2019. Mm -hmm specifically identifies all the meetings and it says that solution it's a I'm resolution sorry, i apologize so the re that is the resolution. the resolution okay there is an ordinance that is prior to that that 
refers to things that are not being done. That ordinance goes back to, I could give you the date. I have a copy of it somewhere. But it's a very old ordinance. Give me a second, I can tell you. That ordinance goes back to, hmm. I mean, I don't think I need the time. Yeah, I believe 1978. And, I, and again, that's part of the review is going to tell us. And again, what the ordinance of, and let's just round it off, what that ordinance says is not being done. And I think that's, that's the procedures. The for next part we're going to is the policies so and there's, procedures. It's really for anybody that's paying attention, uh, listening or watching here, it, it's fairly, in my opinion, it's fairly black and white. We have a resolution authorizing a stipend. That stipend is for X, Y, and Z services including X, Y, and Z meetings, including specifically saying after hour meetings. That stipend is $17,000 and change. That employee is receiving that stipend, but that employee is still creating invoices, walking them down to the finance department and taking money for the same meetings he is already being paid despite the stipend for. In a nutshell, correct me if I misspoke. No, the, the, the initial review clearly shows that, yes. Okay. That's, I mean, that's pretty troubling. I don't know why more people aren't outraged at that, but it's, it's pretty troubling. You know, it sounds like to me that there's been some miscommunication here. And, and yeah, to, miscommunication. And, and Michael, let, let, me, let me finish, please. Yeah. We need to clarify it and make sure that it doesn't happen again. I mean, the whole point for me is Next if, we, if we've identified a problem, then we need to find that problem and find a way to move forward. Typing up an invoice for something you already did, walking it downstairs, uh, getting a check is not a miscommunication. But if we've been doing this for, for years, I and this is the way it's been doing it, I you know, then, and, and we've been doing it for at least two years, so. We? Yeah, we, we're part of this whole puzzle. Oh, I am not part you of this know, puzzle. You're not, no, you're not part of anything that takes responsibility. No, because. Let's be serious. I'm actually. You just take credit, no responsibility. Right, and, and speaking of taking credit, thank you for teeing that up. And, and oh, by the way, let's take credit for the fourth phase of the stadium project, which is not the first phase of the stadium project. Why not? Like, you know, this, this is what Can we stick to this yeah. topic? Yeah, let's so, stick to it. Thanks. Talking about responsibility, Councilman, I will take responsibility for first looking into this matter. I will take responsibility for providing the information to the manager. And I will take responsibility for us uncovering what we've uncovered. You want to call it past practice for some strange reason. You want to say well, we've not, always I'm, done I'm it that's that way. No, you, you did reason. say that. You we, did say we've that. been doing this. Oh, so you know, it's okay. It's, it's something, it's something Are you that, that we need that to clarify okay, and say it's it? wrong. Okay, we're going to say now it's wrong. So let's, let's figure it out. Getting paid twice? Forward. Getting paid twice is wrong? It's I, just wrong? You know, no, can't say it. Get on the record. Mike, on the record is if we've made a mistake as a Wait. township, then we need to correct it. Okay. You know, if, if you want to go after somebody in particular, so that's let me your ask prerogative. You a let if me you want to go after somebody in particular, that's your prerogative, and you've been doing this for freaking three years. Got it. So stop so it. So many, many years ago, when our recreation director, many years ago, was taking money out of a fund, uh, was that a mistake? Was that a miscommunication? Well, by the way, he created that fund, and he created an account, and that's how he did it. Right, but was that a it's miscommunication? Not, it's not the same thing. It's, oh, it's not. definitely not the same thing. All right, this so, is stuff that we've, we've basically had supervision over through our so CFO. Being that Anthony kind of brought up the reason why rice notices were being issued, and clearly we have at least one council member that just wants to put this under the rug. Clearly that's it, wrong, Mike. Okay. Clearly what I want to do is, is get to a point where we stop harassing the business people and, and just move forward. That's, we, are, that's the issue. Should we if hold, we need to clarify this, Mike, yes, I agree with that. The, let me we need to question. come forward, but I, I think that you've shown over the course of time, in fact, we just went through an investigation that cost us $40,000, you know, going after the same person. Stop. Please stop this. So that was, actually, that was actually a private matter that was never discussed publicly. Well, good. But being that Councilman Bell brought it up, it did cost $40,000 to actually say I did nothing wrong. If so, they didn't say that. They said we need to follow best practices. And I don't uh, perceive this as best practices. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do now. And you and I are going to disagree on we that. We are. One. So would, would, would getting to the bottom of it include discipline, you think, Councilman? Or, I, no, I don't, you know, I really, I really can't tell, Mike, because that seems to be all you're interested in. Got Let's it. discipline and hurt people. So what I'm going to do now, since I think we're getting a little bit of different opinions, opinions here. Yeah, we're going to get different um, opinions. Because, Councilman Ravel, you have not seen any of the data, to the best of my ability. You haven't seen the invoices. Well, Mike, you haven't you, reviewed You opened anything. all this stuff. You did all this stuff. Nobody, nobody knew about it till now. 
So therefore, I'm going to just give a nice summary. I think the manager did an okay job. I think some of us That's up here. That's a good here, job myself. I think so. some of us here are just trying to say, well, let's just fix this administratively. But I'm going to actually get into it a little bit. Is that okay? It's your prerogative. It is. So as mayor and a member of the township budget committee, especially because of all the development happening, I have been curious about the policies and procedures surrounding a very specific bank account called the developer escrow account. In January 2021, I formally asked, this went back to January by the way, in January 2021, I formally asked the township manager for documentation regarding this account. Eight months later, after putting into context other information that I gathered, I believe there needs to be a full forensic audit of these accounts. Basically, for the general public listening, developers looking to do business in Belleville make an application to either our planning board or our zoning board. And they, they then place escrow monies in an account pursuant to state statute and township ordinances. Those funds, according to the state statute, should only be used for payment to outside professionals and consultants and for reimbursement to the township for municipal professionals. In essence, the outside professionals are professionals who have previously been qualified by the township, who, who then have an established business relationship with the township, such as our engineers, redevelopment council, and planners. They're all paid from these escrow accounts as they perform their professional services on behalf of the township. It should also be noted, when these outside professionals are qualified via the public RFP process, their fee structure is noted and approved. The state statute is very clear. Only outside professionals and consultants and reimbursement to the township for salary of municipal professionals are permitted to be paid out of these escrow accounts. Additionally, the state statute specifically states that applicants escrow shall not be billed for any municipal clerical or administrative functions. Quote directly from the state statute. Not satisfied with the results of my email question from January 2021, I was then forced to file an OPA request for the account documentation. I received that information several weeks ago, and today I believe I now have evidence that invoices for professional services have been typed up from within town hall and provided to the finance department. Based on those invoices, checks were cut with the manager's signature stamped on them, as he mentioned before. <laughs> These actions circumvent all known financial checks and balances within the township. No authority exists for such a thing. Arbitrary dollar amounts were selected as a fee structure. It should be noted that one employee in question, Mr. DiLorenzo, is already being compensated $17,292 above his current municipal pay of $173,000 to perform various services and functions on behalf of the planning board and zoning boards. The money being extracted from this account is over and above that additional compensation. Mr. DiLorenzo is our construction code official, to which he receives a municipal salary of $173,000. Mr. DiLorenzo is also our zoning officer, and according to all of our local ordinances, he's not supposed to receive any additional compensation for those services. He does perform some duties as planning director, and he is already receiving an extra stipend of $17,292 per year for services he renders outside his normal work day. In fact, there is a resolution which we mentioned before, authorizing the stipend of the extra $17,000 a year for these services. The resolution clearly states the mayor and the township council of the township of Belleville acknowledge that some of these duties are performed by Frank DiLorenzo outside his regular workday, and therefore he should be compensated by the same. Those duties he's already being compensated for, an extra $17,292 above the $193,000 a year are outlined in the res that resolution. That paragraph actually reads, whereas the mayor, the township council wish to ensure that Frank DiLorenzo is compensated for performing his duties, such as receiving, processing, conducting initial intake for all development applications to the planning board, receiving, processing, conducting all initial intake of development applications under any redevelopment plan, 
provide responses to development applications for compliance, conduct a determination of completeness, and respond to applicants regarding any omissions or deficiencies, certify the completeness to the appropriate board, attend and participate in all regularly scheduled meetings of the planning board, attend and participate in all special meetings of the planning board, meet with developers to discuss applications pending in front of the planning board, attend and participate in developer meetings, and attend all subcommittee meetings pertaining to development projects. Yet, even though he's being compensated for planning board special meetings, planning board subcommittee meetings, even after our meetings, this documentation shows that he regularly created his own invoices for $750 for special planning board meetings, invoices for $200 for planning board subcommittee meetings. He created his own fee structure, typed up invoices, and received checks totaling thousands of dollars. I immediately contacted the township manager and I demanded an investigation. Clearly, the manager thought this was warranted and a rice notice for discussion was had. These are several invoices totaling thousands of dollars that have been typed up in town hall for arbitrary dollar amounts that are not part of any of our ordinances. $200 for a special meeting, a subcommittee meeting, $750 for subcommittee meetings, I'm sorry, for special planning board meetings, everything to which he was already being compensated for an additional $17,000. Invoices typed up in this building, walked downstairs, checks cut, and money deposited. I don't think this is a miscommunication. I would ask the township manager to continue investigating this. I don't know why three weeks wasn't already enough, but I do ask him to continue investigating this and or decide whether it needs to be done by outside uh, agencies. Mr. Manager, anything else? Just, just as a clarification to council, <clears throat> just a quick question. Why didn't we do this with an ordinance rather than a resolution? Because to me, my understanding with certain resolutions is they're only good for like a year. Not sure. Um, frankly, um, we are in private. We're, we're in public. Oh, okay. And if I tell Never mind. Never you, mind. If I tell you that, I will violate my lawyer client privilege. So okay. I can't Never mind. do that. Never mind. I bet a lot of people are hearing that for the first time. This is something that I've been looking at for a long time. It's clear. It's obvious. <clears throat> we have somebody being compensated to do X, Y, and Z. That compensation includes special meetings, subcommittee meetings and after hours meetings. We then have somebody typing up invoices in this building, walking downstairs, creating arbitrary dollar amounts for $750, or to, what if he wanted $2,000 for a subcommittee meeting? What if he wanted $1,250? They're literally, he's literally created his own invoices, his own fee structure, typed them up on our computers probably up on the third floor, walked downstairs and got checks for services he's already being additionally compensated for. Total compensation, $189,000 before you add up all these invoices. I only have six months worth of invoices, but by the way, $189,000 legitimately before you add up these invoices for arbitrary dollar amounts. Is it a miscommunication, Councilman, to make up your own fee hey, structure? I, Mike, I, I'm saying we need to clarify it and we need to move forward. That's you, oh. that your prerogative. You want to sit here and give me this diatribe, continue on. But you know what? We haven't resolved squat. Oh, I think we've resolved stuff. I think now the public knows, I think the manager knows, I think yes. the administration knows that we have an employee in here typing up his own invoices, walking downstairs, bypassing every single checks and balances, not being paid in this payroll, but by the way, <laughs> but just getting a check on the side and depositing it for services he's already being paid for. You, Councilman, as a, as a steward of this township, I, should, I should be, should be shocked by that. I, you I, should be my, outraged. I, I agree. And instead of trying to tell I me it's a clerical error, you should be outraged. That we should be shocked. But then okay. we, you need to take responsibility, too, because you are the head of this council. You are the man. So, you know what? I'm the one that's and that it's been going on for years, Mike. It's been going on for years while you were the mayor. Oh, Come on, no. stop. No, it's my fault. Well, All right. hey, I'll turn, I'll turn fault, myself Mike. in with I, everybody Mike, else. Turn yourself in because you should. My fault. Got it. Anyway, let's move forward, man. So, uh, Tommy, anything? No, I just soaking this all in right now. Okay. It's the first time. So, so um, 
I, I did want to ask uh, the manager, and thank you, Mayor, for providing the information. Obviously, there's a lot for us to process, and I understand that emotions run high when uh, we have to make decisions that involve uh, identifying what actually happened and who uh, this is. I don't think it's about blaming and finding fault, but understanding how can we be better and how can we make our, you know, what we, we have a responsibility to the township to manage well and to establish policies that can be followed so things like this don't happen. So. Uh, to the manager, I understand that you're both still in this process of investigation. Um, but as of now, we have a level of, of information. That, what happens with this? What, where do we go from here? So, from in other towns, there will be a criminal investigation, in my opinion. But so, from a procedural point, which we will discuss, because and again, I just want to point out one, emphasize one thing that the mayor said. May said. Um, and he used the word checks and balance. I think what we're going to find out in this process and possibly at the next conversation, there is no checks and balance, or there were no checks and balances. Which is highly susceptible to fraud. Again, um, when we talk about the next topic, the planning board and the zoning board have to, and they have a fiduciary responsibility to approve every single invoice. They have never to the best of my knowledge, and again, the review is nowhere near complete, but to the best of my, not my knowledge, none of the, there has been no checks and balances at all, and that's a problem. So, so just for you to know and for taxpayers to know, when this was brought to my attention on that day, I have suspended the escrow account. So no one is being paid out of the escrow right. account, whether you're an attorney, whether you're a court stenographer, whether you're a, an engineer a planner, no one will be paid until we have checks and balances in place. It's unfortunate that we found out the way we found out that there are no checks and balances, but I think, again, the part B of this conversation when we discuss procedures, or I should say procedures that are not being followed, we're going to find out that they, they have a fiduciary responsibility to approve every invoice and they haven't approved any invoices. Yeah, so and, and I agree with that, and that is what we, we will do moving forward. Mm -hmm. My question is to what just happened, right? There is, um, in my calculations, just briefly, right, we're talking about 750, 200, and I don't know how many meetings a month we're talking about, but we have established that it goes back at least back to two years. So it, my question is, from here, you know, is there a responsibility for someone to to pay this money back? Is there a responsibility? There very well may be. I mean, okay. at the conclusion of the review, and, and again, I just want to emphasize, you know, the town, ma town manager and the assistant town manager have worked in conjunction and have reviewed every personnel matter that has been before us in the last two years, regardless of it was police, fire, yeah. public works, or in this case, public employees. We have acted as one. I uh, use Mark's 20 plus years experience, my 20 plus years experience. So I, I feel that we will, the, the review will come with a recommendation. Absolutely, and I don't envy your job. I definitely know that this is a difficult process. However, I do think we have a big responsibility to the township to make sure that we do things right. And at the same time, that we review the policies so it doesn't happen we again. Need to set um, a procedure in place. Go clearly preaching to the choir. My, we, my name is on a check that I've never seen. So obviously, that absolutely. Is, that I mean, is that's great, great dangerous. concern of me. Very um, dangerous. Sure. Of course. Those checks wouldn't have been seen if invoices weren't typed up. Uh, and I know we keep saying that there are no checks and balances. There are checks and balance. I mean, I have the ordinance here, which we're going to get into in our discussion, but I have the ordinance here, which is our local ordinance. And it actually says that the zoning officer shall refer and the zoning officer is supposed to be being that checks and balances that everybody says doesn't exist. It's actually the duty of the zoning officer to distribute the materials to different professionals and, and I thought my one conversation in reading in one of them that the and Steve certainly correct me if I'm wrong because I know you and I discussed it but doesn't the planning board and the zoning board similar to the mayor and council approve Approved. bill lists aren't they supposed to be voting on a bill list each at each yes, monthly meeting absolutely. Absolutely. according to our ordinance yes to be doing. presented to them by the zoning officer or time out so we do have we do have a procedure in place it's not being done so my question is if that zoning officer is supposed to be doing x y and z and not doing it what are you going to do about that okay. again that would be part of the review and the conclusion and the recommendation okay understood because i mean it's easy to say the, the system is broken this is not broken there's somebody not doing their job 
the job is supposed to be, it says it right here, the zoning officer does that stuff. I think the problem is, is the zoning officer is actually submitting invoices getting paid. I think when we discuss policies and procedures, we're going to see that we do have to make some, some serious corrections. Or you have to actually hold the employees accountable to do the tasks that the ordinance says they're supposed to be doing. I don't want to make this more complicated and more confusing. No, I don't mind, because I'll explain it. But, okay, that's fine. But we did write one employee for receiving pay to go to uh, meetings, and they were getting some meetings. I think they were $150 of meetings. There's nothing in place that pays for 150 However, we do have a salary ordinance that says the planning board secretary gets $500 per meeting. Per, no, per, I, and I'm not going that route, but it does say it's for the planning board meetings. <laughs> it says $500 per meeting, the salary meeting. ordinance. Right. So a planning board meeting or a special planning board meeting or a subcommittee meeting, it doesn't say that. So, so maybe she shouldn't have been getting paid $150. Maybe she should have been getting $500. Maybe. Because, again, and that's the part that I think when the more we look into this, the more we have to, I think we have to correct that salary ordinance because if it says $500 per meeting. So let me ask you a question. You sit in on our redevelopment meetings, right? The zoning officer is also there. The construction code official, same person. No invoices for those meetings. Why, why, is there no, like, uh, why is there no invoices for those meetings? Are you asking me that question? Just, um, if you have any idea why. I mean, I'm sure you've talked to the employee about this in three I, weeks. I never, never asked the employee the question of why he didn't submit. For uh, redevelop the meetings that we, we sit on, the redevelopment meetings. Again, it's after hours. You're asking a question I don't have the answer why to. Why not make up a, a number of $1,125 for those meetings? Isn't it odd that we're just making up arbitrary numbers and deciding which meetings we want to get paid for? You don't find that off? No, I, I have already presented everything that I've looked at to date so far. Got it. I clearly think that there has to be <clears throat> some uh, corrections to the resolution or to the ordinance or the salary ordinance, whatever. I and or what if you find wrongdoing, I'm assuming you're going to act on that wrongdoing. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And I think, I think one of the questions that um, Councilwoman uh, Topinia asked was, would one of the uh, considerations be to pay the money back. And certainly that would obviously be one of the considerations. I mean, can I submit invoices and get money and then when I get caught, pay it back? But I was answering a question. No, I'm, just, I'm asking you a new question. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, on salary. Question? I'm on salary for $7,000 a year. I, why don't I just make up an invoice for a redevelopment meeting? We have a redevelopment meeting next Tuesday. We discuss developers. They have escrow accounts. Why don't I just type up an invoice and decide that I want to make Six hundred dollars for redevelopment meetings get paid, and then in a couple of years, if I get caught after thousands and thousands of dollars total up, I'll pay it back. I, I don't. Why don't I just? I would love that. I don't, I don't even have to redevelopment. I think you're sending a bad message to other employees by, by saying, "Well, if you get caught doing wrong, you pay it back." I don't back. know if the redevelopment committee is even recognized by our town ordinance. I don't. I don't. I don't know the answer to that. Subcommittees really not, by the way. I don't. I don't know. So the the point I'm trying to say is, there's clearly again. Review is not completed, but one of the considerations would be to answer your question. There's a, a, a difference between a committee and a board. A board is created by ordinance, right? Sure. There, there's rules and, and policies and procedures in place for the planning board, zoning board, library board, all of that. For the redevelopment committee, to your credit, I think you developed it when you started bringing development into Belleville. So I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the redevelopment committee is recognized anywhere. Got it. As any authority, I mean, I don't know if we don't vote. There's no votes and, and things like that. I think we discussed and stuff. Very like informal. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? I uh, gave Councilman Graziano a chance. Miss Burke. No, no. Naomi spoke. Good. Vinny. Good. Steve. Okay. So with that being said, we're going to move on to discussions. Dovetailing perfectly into this discussion is the explanation of developer fees and policies. So I have a. Uh, just so the public knows, there are two things that we're dealing with now. We're dealing with a state statute that says how developer fees are done. It's much like an attorney trust account. It's, it's got its own statute explaining how it's done. That's governed by the state. We then have a local ordinance. Are you going to refer to uh, Chapter 19? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. I got 19 here. Do you have copies for everyone? Because I think I have copies. No. You have copies? This was your presentation. No. No. You put this on the agenda. Explanation of developer fees policies from the township manager. Well, who put it on the agenda? Not me. Well, yeah, but you're going to explain it to us. Passing down or what? 
Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure it's not the marked up copy. I don't think it is. That's a quick picture. So that's, I think that's what you're referring to, right? Sir? We do have copies. 19, but do you also have, since we're handing out information, do you have the state statute? I think that's it. I do. I don't know if I have. Uh, I could put up my screen for everybody to read if they'd like, because I have it here. I'll point everybody to the highlighted portion that says the municipality or proving authority shall not bill the applicant or charge any escrow account or deposit authorized in the subsection B of the section for any municipal or clerical administrative functions. So do you have this to hand out to everybody? No. Okay. So we should definitely start with that because yeah, that's local. I have uh, ordinance number 2240. No, I'm looking for state statutes. Which is an ordinance requiring applicants for development and developers to establish deposits of money in escrow. Is that the one you're referring to? I'm referring to state statute title 40 and chapter 19, which you handed out. This is state. This is local. You handed out local. I just wanted everybody to be aware of the highlighted portion that literally says you cannot pay any money out of the escrow for clerical or municipal administrative functions, yet we just think it's an oversight. But we already had that discussion, so now let's talk about how we're going to adhere to the state statute, which I think sure. you could take this local ordinance and it's not worth anything because it can't supersede state statute. So exactly. any discussion really should start with the state statute, which actually initially talks about only being paid by outside consultants and reimbursed by for municipal services. Reimbursed, meaning that we pay someone a salary and then we, the township, collect money based because we already paid them, not they get paid and they get paid again. That's not the way it's supposed to be. So just that to, says it right there. Just to clarify for the direction, are we not going to discuss the existing ordinance in place that has the floors or we're going to discuss the state statute, which I'm fine. If we're going to discuss the state statute, maybe we should take a five minute recess and have Jackie make copies for all of us. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's up to yeah, you. Again, I, I don't, you're referring to the state statute. I may not have read that. Understand this. Okay. So the three-week investigation hasn't even gotten to, to the state statute yet. So we want to talk about the three-week uh, investigation. Let's talk about um, the assistant town manager being on vacation for one week. Got it. And I don't know where you've been for the last week, but I've been in people's basements and cleaning up sidewalks okay. and streets for the last Somehow week. Somehow you found Chapter 19, though. Chapter 19 was found in the first week. Okay. All right. So go ahead. Talk about 19. I thought we were talking about the state statute. You don't have it. Okay, so we're not talking about the state statute. We're talking about Chapter 19? I guess so. This was your presentation from the township manager. So boss. you're ready for 19? Let's go with 19, I guess. No, I, again, um, I don't believe we have checks and balances in place for the planning board and the zoning board. Um, my presentation to you is that maybe you are not aware of it and you just found out about it for tonight for the first time. But... There is an escrow account. It's kept down in the finance department. Up until two, three weeks ago, every check paid out of the escrow account was done on a, a stamp machine. I was, I'm told that that's the way it's been done for years. I don't know the total number of years. The review haven't, hasn't told us, is this issue a 10-year-old problem, a five-year-old problem, or a two-year-old problem? But the point I'm trying to say is, um, so, Again, the invoices are being submitted. I don't know if anybody is reviewing them to as far as to the accuracy of the um, invoices, okay? Uh, and there is no checks and balances in place as far as I'm concerned because it clearly says that the authority, I think one of, uh, one of the, um, it, it talks about, uh, independent professionals and consultants of Palm Vouchers duly submitted and approved the amount so fixed by the approving authority. So, again, is the authority the construction official or is the authority the board? No, the approving authority would be the planning board or zoning board itself. So, okay. Just like so, the council does a, a, a bill list. Okay. But someone's so, got to give that bill list. It also talks about shall transfer um, the township treasurer, which uh, just as a point of clarification, I don't believe we have a treasurer in place by by resolution or ordinance. I think Joe may have been, Joe Cavanaugh may have been the less. So we, we probably should address that too correctly because this particular um, ordinance talks about how um, the township treasurer shall transfer from the escrow account to the township general funds. And that's where you were talking about how 
we get reimbursed when we do um, work. The, the, if the town engineer or the construction official is doing work on a development project, those dollars and those numbers are reimbursed, uh, and that money is paid back to the township, to the general fund. I don't believe that's being done. And I think so, so what we did, what I said before was, when this was brought to our attention, we called a timeout, we suspended the account, and when I say suspended, no invoices, regardless of uh, individual company engineers, have been paid and won't be paid until we have something in place. In your review of Chapter 19, whose job is it to collect the invoices and present them to the board? I don't have that answer handy. I'm, I'm going to give you the answer. It's 1913.2. 13.2? Yep. Sure. Number one, A1. A1. Go ahead. You have it? 1913.2. A, number one. The escrow account to be established under the section. Right. The that zoning one. officer shall refer the applications with the maps to all the professionals. Mm -hmm. So obviously the zoning officer collects the information, he disperses it. Number two, within 14 days of receipt, professionals must submit uh, their estimates. You would think that since the zoning officer is issuing, the zoning officer then receives. But could I and, just, just yeah. and again, I'm just putting that out so the council can take it all in. So it says within 14 days after receipt, the professionals shall submit an estimate right. of the funds. Again, this is a, a escrow account that I have no knowledge of, that I have not worked with. So I can't tell you right now that within 14 days they're being submitted, which could be another flaw if, if it's not. I don't think it's a flaw. I just think somebody's not doing their job. But I don't know if it's being done or not. I, okay. I don't know that answer. Okay. I, I don't necessarily think it's a flaw. I just think... <clears throat> The, the, the person in that title is not doing their job. Okay. And there might be a reason why that's not that's happening that way because there's something else going on. If, but, if I may, Mayor, to, to sure. Anthony, just a question because you said it three or four times yeah, that as soon as we found out we halted the escrow fund, we, we stopped things, right, not to continue this. Will that function still be done going forward as we we control it? Progress I'm hoping the town? I mean, I'm hoping to stop. I'm hoping to walk away with maybe, if it's not tonight, in a very near meeting soon with a clear, uh, clear direction that we are going to sit down with the board secretaries, the construction officials, the chairman of each board, so that we're all on the same page. Because if we found out anything in this last couple of weeks, is that the right hand really doesn't know what the left hand was doing because I, I mean I made a call to a chairman asked him a question he didn't have the right answer or he didn't have the answer okay he didn't know the answer so again that's but, but my point but my point is we halted that I don't I personally I don't think the town wants to see things stop moving forward because of this <clears throat> meaning you understand what I'm saying and for other people to get paid as well although well, yeah, this I just want to see is on the investigation Mm -hmm. right. And it, there's ways of handling that, and that's by taking the invoices and, and asking a chairman to come in. What, what if we just... An oversight by the CFO. What, what if we just said to you, Mr. Manager, we want you to make sure Chapter 1913.2 is being enforced? Because it's, there isn't really a breakdown. It says the zoning officer refers the application to the professionals. Within 14 days of receipt, they submit their estimates. Those estimates go to the board. It's clear who's supposed to be doing that. I don't think we need a deeper percent. I think you just need to make sure people are doing what they're obligated to do. But I, and again, that's your job. So that's, But I just said that we need to put the chairman of each board. It doesn't say anything about a chairman here. It says the authority. Let's go back to what I said before. The planning board and zoning board. I'm, okay. I'm on the planning board, so I, I could... I could planning board and zoning board plan works. must vote on all bills, just like this governing body vote, yes. vote on a bill list tonight. So it has to okay. come before us, the planning board, to do that. Right. I or, can't make or it I'm come not going to put my name on it. If somebody else wants to put on their name on it, but it, be you're, my guess. you're not reading number one. But who, it, pre who prepares it? Would it be the CFO again, like they prepare it, it for us? Again. Why don't we just read what it says? It says the zoning officer. But that's, on, that's only one step in the entire process. No, it's not. Well, sure there are. There, oh, that's just for the initial escrow. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's, and, it's then the actual, bill, and then it it's, goes it's further. Not, it's not the bills. The stat, the bill, it the, goes further. People, 
Well, Upon receipt of such estimates, the approving authority to... shall determine that the funds they consider to be reasonable and necessary once to pay. Up, once they're before us and to build this, yes. Right. But in order to we distribute get this bill and get the invoices. You're on number one, and I get it, and, and, and I agree with you. If you Thank want you. me to say that it is number one, it is the zoning officer shall refer development, yes, it does. I, I, okay. I agree with that. All right. but, I did, but you have to take the ordinance in That's its place. I agree. It later goes on to say, upon such receipt of such estimates, the approving authority shall determine Just that like the, the bill list. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so I think that was the question. I thought that was the question. No, but okay. Again, it's my name on something that clearly the town manager and the zoning board have no connection, right? The planning board and the town, I don't have the authority to appoint. Uh, and again, it is a little confusing, and I think you know this. The mayor and council adopt a budget with a dollar amount for, say, the planning board attorney or the zoning board attorney. But the mayor and council doesn't appoint the planning board or the zoning board attorney. The planning board does, and the zoning board does. So again, I think there's a disconnect there as well. No, I, well, I, the planning board's supposed to hire their own attorney, their own the planning board does make those decisions. The, the municipal council obligates funds right. for them to draw from, but no, the boards definitely vote for their own professionals. Can you clarify how that relates to this in regards to funds? And I mean, I understand your, your, your point about how there's a disconnect and who hires whom, but I'm just trying to understand how this relates to the portion of funding. That has been just which, which part? Part about the uh, that disconnect with their hiring their own attorneys with how this you know we're we're talking about procedures are we not are we yes. still there yes we're okay on so I would like to bring the conversation back to that because we do not have other things on the agenda so we walk out of here with some actionable items because otherwise what we're going to do respectfully to all the men here is just walk out with trying to determine who set the most but ultimately we're not getting anything across so can we be a bit more specific as to what are we looking into here we have this information and we're trying to identify which proce procedures are not being followed if we need time to read them then maybe we just need to stop and we need to consider let's read this let's study it and in the next meeting we all sit down with questions because i find that right now we don't know what we don't know right that's the first step in I, investigation you have to know what you don't know and then that you don't know what you don't know then you come in with the right questions because otherwise this is just an argument and it's a waste of tax dollars it's not okay i'm fine with that so, I, you know, I just want to... I, I agree with you, Deputy Mayor, but now what happens is do we have to go through this whole rice policy every time we're going to talk about no. this? I no. believe so, Councillor. If you're going to speak about an employee, you but, have to notify that employee. But if we're going to do policy and procedure, we right. don't have if to. If we're going to do policy, if we're going to just... Well, well those, those are two separate things. Two separate things. Okay. But because, but because this is now public, right? right we I don't know. Should, we should, right? Not, not by... Our choice, no, but no, not by our choice. But my point is, why would we have to go back to that drawing board every time? Because it's public now, right? No, but the law is the law. I mean, if we're going to speak about, if we're going to speak about employees, the law. I'm just saying, again, we have to follow whatever the the, the statute is. What becomes. everybody's missing here, just 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 let okay. me say something here. What everybody's missing here is, ordinarily, personnel matters such as individual personnel matters has nothing to do with this mayor and council. This mayor and council does not discipline, does not, it's all your, it's all the manager's responsibility. Your purpose in advising the mayor and council about those three individuals that you riced was just for an advisory, an advisory circumstance. I'm fine with that. You, it does not, if you decide that Everything was okay, and 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 you just want to change it going forward. That's ultimately your prerogative. If you decide that you know uh, there should be dis discipline involved, that's your prerogative. We're, everybody, public and otherwise, always discusses how this mayor and council doesn't do any of that. They don't get involved in the day-to-day -day operations. You were doing it as a courtesy to the, to the mayor and council, and since you were going to do it and raise the issue of individual employees. I advise you, you need to rice notice them. Okay. Um, but ultimately, going forward, if whether you would, the only time you yeah. would need to rice anyone going forward is if you were going to do that again. Because yeah. this mayor and council doesn't give you direction and can't, under the Faulkner Act, give you direction with respect to what happens to an individual employee. Um, and I, and I, agree, I agree with what you're saying, and I actually thought I said that. 
in, in my presentation to the mayor and council. Right. I, so, I really. So when, when Councilman Graziano asked that question, no, rice notices were only necessary for this um, because an employee was going to be discussed. And even the. And I, I actually, we were being overly cautious with respect to that because this mayor and council can't do anything. But if there was going to be discussions and there was going to be some opinions rendered by any of these mayor and council affecting any of those employees, they had a right to know it, and which is why you gave them the right no, rice notice. So uh, in answer to Ca Councilman Graziano's question, that's the only reason why you would have to do that. Uh, but ultimately, this mayor and council has no control over it. And going forward, I think Councilman Revolt mentioned that, if we're deputy mayor, if we discuss a second time the policy procedures, we don't necessarily need to touch employees. Therefore, there's no rice notice. It's just this conversation again. Yeah. Your recommendations to the policies and procedures might come at the next caucus, and there's no reason, in my opinion, to rice employees because we're not talking about specific employees. There's no reason to rice employees because we're not going to speak about them. Right. There, there won't be, and if we are, we have to rice them. Right, and, and that's discussed in the executive session either. That's correct. Understood. It, it would be policies and procedures that the public should be aware of. Aware of that we're putting in place. Mm -hmm. Anybody well, else? We really should to echo what Councilman Graz said. We really should get on this though because at the next meeting, because we do quick. have a lot of stuff in the pipeline that could get held up. So. Maybe yeah, and what I said before, I really want to put the chairmen of yeah. each board. The chairmen, yeah, the I want the secretaries in the room. Mm -hmm. I want everybody in the room because I, again, I want to go through. I, and again, we'll go through every single mm -hmm. uh, uh, point and step. In, in Agreed. The does it have? But my question is, does it have to be? He can do it. Can he? Can you do it yourself? Does it have? So right, call a meeting. No, no. I mean, I think Tommy. Tommy's trying to stop. No, I'm trying not, to keep progress, I'm right? I'm trying to keep progress, but yeah. my point That's is this, it. so I'll, I'll, I'll be blunt, Go ahead. right? So if this is going on, everybody knows the job can still be done based on the statute. From my Agreed. Mm -hmm. Is that a true statement? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, so can I say something here? Based on the statute, absolutely, the job can be done because the statute does not require the bills to be approved by the approving authority. The CFO can approve the bills uh, for the developers. So the statute Should does do. not require our ordinance is a good ordinance. There are some inconsistencies in terms of one section and another. Mm -hmm. We have, it's duplicative, not inconsistencies. But our, our ordinance actually provides more checks and balances than the statute requires, which mm -hmm. is fine. Mm -hmm. But the CFO, if... CFO. And, but the CFO just apparently, I, I, and you'll do this in your investigation, is, as to how that procedure was working, how how these bills were getting paid. You'll do that in your investigation. But going forward, you can specifically direct the CFO to yeah. not only look at the invoices all and provide and ask questions or have you ask questions. But I would strongly so recommend how not to approve anything until somebody else's until signature the board, is on it. Until the board whether approves. it's the construction official, whether it's the, the chairman of the board. the board. Again, because just on what we're saying here, mm -hmm. a planner can submit a bill for six hours and was only at the meeting for two hours. She's going to put her name on it she and said that the planner was there for six hours when he was only there for two Absolutely. hours. Absolutely. I don't think anybody would want to put their name on something like that huh. unless I knew that that person that put in for six hours worth of work did the six hours worth of work. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is it was supposed to be included in the current structure of payment, right? That's what, that's what, this whole, what, I, what I gather. What right? was supposed to be included? It was so it. The, 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 the job that was being performed was all part of the stipend. Correct. I don't see well, that. I don't see that. Um, I can't necessarily say that. So, it, it no, it was part of it was part of the job as the planning uh, doing the planning work that because we don't have a planning director do the planning work and the zoning officer work. It was part of that job according to ordinance. Yes. Um, all I'm saying, and, and my sole purpose in doing is, we don't, we may need, there may be some decisions after everybody reviews this, uh, and we have a discussion next time, that the ordinance has to be changed. If the or we do not want these payments to be held up and this development to be held up. Be I don't want to hold them up, I just want somebody's signature. Right, right, I get it. So what I'm saying is, 
under we would not be in violation of we would not be in violation of the ordinance if the CFO in conjunction with you know you and, and the chairman of the chairmen of the boards to say okay was this done I mean Every law department bill that comes through, I look at and I make sure the billing's correct and the hourly is correct and all that stuff, right? That's what you need to do until you're in a place to sit down with the board secretaries, the two uh, board chairmen, uh, the construction code official the, uh, who also serves as a zoning officer, uh, and develop so everybody knows what the procedure the is here. supposed to be. We're not doing um, And then you won't. In the long run, you won't authority. ultimately have mm -hmm. have that have the problem the you had be going. In I think we're all saying basically the same thing. So, right. okay. Council, can you clarify just one more thing for me? Um, in the process of paying um, other uh, developers, can other professionals, other professionals, excuse me, yeah, um, can we choose to pay certain people and not other people that are still under investigation in this process? Or if we resume paying for professional services, do we have to continue to pay while they're still conducting that investigation? Well, you, you, professionals are entitled to payment, right? They're outside. So, so in, in, s employees, no, you don't, I mean, so Anthony the has clarification already said, would be Anthony then, has already said that the employees were getting paid. They're not for putting in that, any invoices, so we don't have to worry well, about. I think he already told it. them not to put in. Got it. Already. Okay, understood. That's why I just wanted to clarify that there no, aren't any I'm new talk, invoices. I'm, a, I'm talking about third-party professionals that the mm -hmm. planning board or zoning board needs. Understood. Uh, attorneys, attorneys, attorneys that the plan, you know, uh, the redevelop the redevelopment attorney is 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 an attorney that the township hires. But the, they're paid out of escrow because mm -hmm. the township has to hire them, and the township shouldn't be paying them. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not. That's okay. Yeah. Now that's enough. You know. Funds that were supposed to the township is supposed to get from the escrow account are, are happening in every. Oh, they're definitely not. And I think and that's you know that's obviously we're, we're losing more money. Right. That's something we need to address. So uh, so that for for instance that stipend we're supposed to be billing that is reimbursable. For that stipend actually is for 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 in most circumstances is reimbursable. So that stipend that the township is paying yeah, pay is, is it, should come back through that account and into yeah. our budget. Right. But understand what it's a reimbursement happening to the township. Is, we're not doing that either. Budget yeah. that technically. Is that instead of us being reimbursed, no, that person is invoicing and collecting more money. Understood. Yeah. yeah but we're not invoicing mm -hmm. appropriately either. As right. we're not we're not getting our reimbursement. Right. We drop what you're saying. Right. Why right. uncover But we again, that's a problem too. That you know that's a you know the development is now that there's more development, obviously, it becomes right, more that, obvious. No, it's right. right. Well, and, and it has to be addressed mm -hmm. to, to, sure. to straighten it out. Yeah. I agree. All right. Straighten it out. That's straighten it. it out. I'm good. Well, there's a lot of questions, but for tonight, that's it. I think that's <laughs> good enough for me. Yes. Now let's.